This is Ramulov. That's the full picture that you've just been looking at. Um, sorry, Raoul, Raoul, Ivan Raoul. He uh, is actually French. We don't know what his dates. It's all very hazy, this early, early days of photography, the history of it. Podolsk, it's in Moscow, Ablast. It's a, it's a very taking painting. The place itself is very little interest. And then Odessa, the Odessa Steps, famous Odessa Steps. Then coming Nikolai Petrov, uh, this, um, this image is a really, a, as you can see, it's a, it's a bromide, uh, is the start of pictorialism, um, moving from the early days of photography into pictorialism, and even more picturesque, and uh, of course the cliché of the uh, black earth, the harvests. And then something a bit more racy, the pictorialism from Odessa, not so strong. It's mainly going over in uh, Petersburg and Moscow, that particular movement. Now, continuing that show, that was from uh, 1840 to 1940. I'm going to go to the show that we showed in 1982 that includes that last half of the show. Abram Sternberg, uh, born in Ukraine, Jewish, obviously. His brother was a very famous painter as well. And he bridged... Um, the kind of new, new photography with pictorialism, as you can see from that image. And there, much earlier, 1923, he was asked to do these two photographs of Vladimir Mayakovsky, Lilia Brick, by Alexander Rodchenko, because Rodchenko was working on a book of Mayakovsky's poem about Lilia Brick, his girlfriend, uh, called about this, and he wanted these pictures for the photo montage. After this, Rodchenko started making photographs himself. Semyon Friedeland, based in Kiev. Uh, and it's not an image you see so often, actually. Uh, I think quite a lot of them were destroyed of the demolition of the, of the monasteries and the churches. So that's, that's that. Um, just to say quickly, uh, what I got very much involved with in, in these exhibitions, these large thematic international exhibitions, was really seeing how things are falling apart and how, how, to, how to express that in an exhibition in a way that bolts it into history, into the local history, but into, into a also much wider history of ideas and actions, uh, which, which artists themselves were obviously busy with subconsciously or consciously. I will make a very brief presentation of one particular project uh, which we and Victoria Bovikina were working on since 2022. Uh, it's the platform called Ukrainian Photographies, which originated from the NGO not-for-profit organization we called Ukrainian Photography, which we founded in 2020 in Kiev, having the idea that we want to work on development and maybe increasing the visibility of Ukrainian photography abroad. And in 2022, when the full-scale invasion of Russia started, we were living in London and we were asking question what could we do probably to support the common cause and common effort to, to, to make sure that Ukrainian culture and photography in, in particular remains visible, remains, al remains alive, remains active. And um, at that time, there were many grassroots, but also um, institutional initiatives aimed at uh, protecting, preserving the cultural heritage, evacuating the collections abroad, which was, of course, was the, the most important thing at the time. But at the same time, we thought that probably the, one of the ways to make Ukrainian photography Mm, be more visible abroad in, and at the same time to give people abroad more understanding of Ukraine at the time when Russia propaganda, Russian propaganda was uh, extremely uh, active for already many years. So we thought we need to try and engage international researchers, curators, art historians, organizations to research and work with Ukrainian photography and what would be the result is probably the new research materials in English, which is crucial. So they will be available long term and for other English speaking researchers. So the idea of the platform is quite simple. We, we invite uh, international photography researchers, so art researchers, to work with Ukrainian photography and 
write a short articles, reviews, or curators can uh, curate an online exhibition, which is a specific part of the of the of the platform. For example, you can see the review by uh, Michael Kurtz, who is presenting a little bit later on the work of Yaroslav Solop, and I think this is a great example of a new external researcher looking at the work in a different way and produces the new kind of perspective and it was really refreshing for us at least but we we know we knew this work for a long time but michael provided some different opinion which how we think the art and culture is actually working so it's the constant dialogue and the constant conversation which makes it all be relevant so we try to contextualize Ukrainian photography maybe within the broader cultural discourse, not, uh, not showing it as, a, as some separate uh, vacuum space, but trying to, to make it a part of the, of the global context. Uh, there are obviously challenges because the, organizations, <laughs> the organization is now only two of us. And uh, the plan is now that we probably will restructure the website a little bit after we finish with the Venice Biennale. We will try to make this platform maybe less oriented on um, exhibitions, but more oriented on becoming an archive, like a storage of knowledge. So be accessible, put in a very simple form, so where you can probably go and search by author and to find some different um, types of research on this author. And I would just wanted to say that we are super um, happy and welcoming if anyone would be interested in working with us and uh, writing about something, making a re review or, or an article. So this is basically the main message I would like to, I would like to say. Hi. Uh, my name is Emine Zedinova, and I um, will be talking today about Ukrainian Warchive, which is a digital, um, uh, it's a digital photo archive of Russo-Ukrainian war. Uh, so um, the initiative started uh, in 2022, um, half a year probably after invasion took place. And um, it started with uh, myself, Misha Pidan, Zhenia Safonov, and Katya Sergatskova. And the idea, uh, the, uh, it was a response pretty much to the invasion. Uh, idea was what, uh, what Ukrainian photographers going through and what's happening right now in Ukraine. And of course, like we are very integrated in the community and we knew that there is a problem with Ukrainian photo journalists trying to like moving, some of them moving to the west of Ukraine, some evacuating, some are staying, returning back. And there is always a question what happens to all these hard drives and what happens to all of this work, which is digital, most of it produced digitally. And is there is a place for these photographers to store photography and actually to preserve? And of course, one of the issues, like as me, as a person who uh, come a little bit more from history and sociology background, um, as, um, uh, as actually Max mentioned as well, is uh, how much um, ra um, Russian narrative you was using history and twisting history throughout like towards Ukraine and how much it was used to attack Ukraine to justify this invasion and like war crimes and stuff. So for us it was very important also to create some kind of a platform or like thing which is in long term perspective would be some kind of a platform which uh, can lead back researchers who are interested in this period of time. And, um, and we believe this is actually a, a changing time for a European and global history. Unfortunately, the reality is that um, even if you store your work in several storages or clouds, if only you have an access to it and logging, like personal loggings to it, it's also a question, if something happens to you, what's going to happen, who is going to have an access, who, where are these photographs, how researchers and like, or how we can preserve the work which pretty much Ukrainian photographers are risking their lives for. Um, and what archive is supposed to do is pretty much to have to a lot of descriptive information as we uh, find out ourselves. As a people who work in media and uh, who are photographers all four of us who, when we started, we are photographers and media people, we saw that like, okay, we are making a platform, we'll make it in one month or two months. But then it's 
and I did study history, but I, it's, I started like looking into archiving and I started reading about it and how, and there is a lot more, like you need to develop backbone of archive, which is pretty much the structure of archive, how you store your collections in which, which like phones go into which collections and how you name files for the files to be found in these collections later on. And all this filing needs to be by, the, by international standards and to refer to country, refer to the photographers, refer to the folder. And so we developed this database, which um, I'm just sharing because like I know that like people may be interested. So like with um, each photograph pretty much needs to be entered in this data sheets which with description of each item and then we have also tags creator series genres exif files data diction and tag description which is like another six tabs uh, which needs to be filled up and that is one of the main challenges when you're talking about archiving and working with war photographers who are actively shooting and working in the field is that one thing is to get photographs for them. The moment you want all of this data, which you pretty much need to make that platform work, it takes time from them, it takes time from us, it takes a lot of, it requires resources, which we um, have quite limited resources. And also the question of motivation, of uh, like motivating photographers to do that. Um, yeah, there's an amazing amount of agency here. Um, individuals that are kind of instigating, I suppose, um, that agency and bringing others on board. And I'm I'm just interested in um, in your experience, just that thinking of collaboration and how um, important collaboration is now for the your endeavours, because it feels to me like. Um, um, it's you know you, you're all in different ways um, bringing people both from Ukraine and outside of Ukraine to to um, take something for you know to take something forward that's going to be of use and also powerful in, in the future with it, with an eye to the future I suppose um, and so I just wondered whether you might reflect a little bit on on collaboration and what collaboration you feel you you need going forward um i mean you 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 touched on it a little bit but perhaps expanding on that idea of collaboration and what could support you going forward uh maybe i'll just start like uh, from the uh, perspective of ukrainian photographers i could say that uh, nowadays especially uh, a lot of them it's important to feel that they are not uh, live by themselves, and this is like the one of important way of collaboration. That like it's really to know that they are risking their take a risk of their life, and to making the images, and that it will be visible. These images, and that these images can do something, and that these images will be accepted outside of Ukraine, because like it's like I think this is like one of the importance that. Uh, while you're living in Ukraine, especially if you're a male photographer who are not able to travel even outside of Ukraine, and you're staying in this condition so long time, and it's really, uh, you're kind of became in this bubble. And uh, in this bubble, this is a lot of personal emotions, personal reflections, and still this uh, work uh, which you has to be done on the front line, taking the risk. And this is the most important, this way of to have this touch and be connected with outside world by the different projects involved, by the different publications, by the different feedbacks, by the different feedbacks in the social media, but to be, to have this touch and to feel that you are not alone on this on this work and that you are still uh, doing important job and you're taking this risk for something and you have reason for this. So I think in this moment, this is like one of the most important to have this connection in this case.